Artemis One managers convened on Monday afternoon to review the status of the SLS rocket in the Orion capsule and the status of the countdown operations, as well as two open technical items, and they've given a go to proceed toward launch Wednesday, November 16th for a two hour launch window that opens at 1.04 a.m. Eastern time and closes at 3.04 a.m. Eastern. One of the technical issues that the SLS rocket faces is that there's some caulk around the Orion space capsule between the crew module adapter and the launch abort system. And during the time of the checkouts, NASA found out that some of this caulk could detach during the launch. And the mission management team at this point says there's a low likelihood that any of this caulk could cause any damage to the SLS rocket or any of this flight. And issue two with this launch that technicians completed replacing a component of an electrical connector on the hydrogen tail service mast umbilical. While swapping the component out didn't actually fix the issue, they have redundant sources of information for this connector. Countdown for the launch began early Monday morning at 1.54 a.m. and is progressing smoothly. All the elements of the rocket, the Orion spacecraft, are powered up, and overnight, teams will charge the flight batteries. They're going to be conducting final walkdowns at the launch pad, and they're checking out communications with Orion. And the following milestones remaining in the countdown before the actual launch happens will be happening on Tuesday. Eight hours before the launch start, the core stage locks main propulsion system chill down starts. The core stage LH2 slow fill starts. Everything starts filling up with fuel, basically. The locks fast fill, the LH2 fast fill, the engine bleed kickstart, the core stage LH2 topping. So that means the LH2 that was filling up earlier is getting topped off. It's at the very top and the LH2 replenish, so it keeps fuel coming in because they do have to burn some of that fuel off and it does mist off a little bit. Um, the ICPS LH2 ground support equipment and tank chill down. So all the chilling that's going on with these tanks, it has to be extremely cold because the, the fuel that goes into the engines, it gets super heated and it has to be cold to kind of uh, offset that. The five hours and counting, core stage locks replenish. The locks goes back into the core stage because it's been kind of burning off throughout the day. Uh, ICPS locks main propulsion system chill down. Basically what they're doing here is keeping these tanks filled throughout the day, getting ready for the launch. 50 minutes and counting, final NASA test director briefing is held. Basically they're saying, hey, we got to figure out what's going on. How is this working? Is it working great? The test director says yes or no. And then they have a 40 minute hold built in 30 minute countdown hold begins at L minus 40 minutes. L minus 15 minutes in holding, Launch director polls the team to ensure they are go for a launch. This is really important. At this point, all the systems have to be ready. All the people have to be in place and everything has to be ready to go. And if they're not ready to go, they'll keep it on hold for a while until they figure out what the problem is with the rocket. If you could take a second and hit the like and subscribe button, it'll help out my channel a little bit, but it's going to help you out more because YouTube's going to see that you like space flight content and start recommending you more NASA and SpaceX and SLS and other spaceflight content in the future. So this is helping you more than it's helping me. And it's going to be cool because other creators that you might not know about will show up in your feed and you'll be able to see more people that do cool content, great content about spaceflight. Now let's get back to the Artemis 1 launch. T minus 10 minutes and counting, ground launch sequence starts. The GLS go for core stage tank pressurization. Everything's getting ready for this launch to the moon, and it's going to be epic, and I can't freaking wait for this. They have the LH2 high flow bleed checked. All these things are really technical things, but basically what they're doing is they're making sure that the fuel that goes into the rocket stays in the rocket, doesn't bleed out, and if, it, if there is a bleed out, then they know that that's supposed to happen, and if it's not happening correctly, then they put a hold on it but they will continue to replenish this fuel as they go. ICPS locks terminate, uh, replenish. So no more replenishment. T minus three minutes, 30 seconds. T minus three minutes, 10 seconds. Go for purge sequence. ICPS switches to internal battery power. That means the, um, uh, the, the battery inside the rocket is in charge now. Uh, switches to internal power. The core stage internal power 
Terminal countdown mode at ICPS. ICPS LH2 terminate replenish. So no more replenishment for the ICPS LH2. GLS sends go for automated launch sequence. The great thing is about current rockets is that there's a computer in charge. If anything goes wrong, if everything anything's weird, the computer says, hey, we're not okay. And the computer will make that decision. It's not up to people anymore, which is a good thing because people can be faulty. Uh, core stage flight computer to automated launching sequence goes at T minus 30 seconds. This is when it gets really crazy and awesome. Hydrogen burnoff uh, igniters uh, initiated. GLS sends the command for core stage engine start. 10 seconds, and then you get the 10 second countdown. 10, 9, 8, et cetera. RS2 engine startups at 6.36 seconds. The engines have to start right before it launches. T minus zero, booster ignition, umbilical separation, and liftoff to the moon. Orion spacecraft is going to go around the moon, come back down to Earth. And during that time, they're going to be sending data to and from the craft because we're going to be getting all sorts of data about the next mission, which is Artemis 2, which will be sending humans around the moon. Basically the same mission as the Artemis 1 mission, but they're going to have people inside of it. And Artemis 1 mission has sort of uh, dummies, three dummies inside of it that will be uh, taking data and information from these flights to make sure that it is safe to fly in this rocket because this is a Pathfinder rocket. Basically, this thing is going up to the moon just to make sure that it's okay for people to go. And there's also other science experiments as well, but mainly to make sure that people are able to go to the moon and back. Please like and subscribe to the channel. I would really appreciate that. I do appreciate your time today. So let's have a great launch. It's going to be early in the morning. It is a 1.04 a.m. Eastern Time launch from Kennedy Space Center, Wednesday, November 16th. This flight of the Artemis 1 launch is so important for the future of human spaceflight. And hopefully we can all stay up late and watch this launch. It's going to be a nighttime launch, so it's going to be spectacular. It's going to glow. It's going to be like the sun shining in the middle of the night. It's a huge rocket, 322 feet tall, and it's going to be the most powerful rocket to have launched since Apollo. So thanks so much for watching. And we have some links. I have some videos up here, a, a whole playlist of Artemis missions and Artemis uh, content over there. So if you could take a second, click on one of those links, you'll learn even more about Artemis. So there you go. A couple links over there. My hand is getting cut off. What just happened? Uh oh, that's not good. Oh, wait, there it is. Links over there, up there and down there, probably. All right. See you later. Thanks.